gas load calculation chart. Does it scare the heck out of you? It scared the out of me. It really shouldn't. It's not that hard to do. And today I'm going to show you how to do a gas load calculation chart the right way. How do you size a gas line for a house? Let me ask you one even better. If you're going in to install a tankless water heater or you're a homeowner and you're having a plumber come in to do it, are they doing things right? You want to know if you're adding more BTUs to your system that your gas system will handle it. So today I'm going to draw it out and show you the right way to do a gas load calculation chart. On this one, I'm gonna do a really simple drawing. I'm gonna put the meter right here at the house. I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna bullhead it here at the end. I'm gonna put a branch coming off right here, a branch coming off right here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at this like, this is the water here. And we're gonna assume right now it's 40,000 BTUs because that's about right. We'll put a dryer down here at say 28,000 BTUs. We'll put a furnace up here at say 130,000 BTUs. Let's put a kitchen stove top down here at say 59,000 BTUs. So to get how many cubic feet an hour, you divide each one of these by a thousand. So literally, and I didn't even draw all the numbers here, but I'm just gonna go, who, go through here and take off my thousand. Now I'm looking at 40, 28, 59, and 130 cubic feet an hour. This is what I'm gonna build my entire system up. So there's different charts out there. Look at the chart that works for your area. Look at the chart that, that you're supposed to go by. Look at the fuel gas code. Just make sure you're doing everything based on the pressures that you have and the pressure drop that you have. So what I'm going off of today is two PSI and I'm doing a half a pound pressure drop. Now that's pretty conservative, but that's what I'm gonna build this out. The reason I'm wanting to figure this out is I'm wanting to see if I can put a tankless water heater right back here on the same size line. Now, I already know that I can't do it, but I'm trying to look at it to figure out what I have to do. So what I've got to first do is figure out how many feet do I have? You want to get up in an attic and you want to measure everything out. You need to know how many feet of pipe you have from the meter to the furthest unit. So what we're going to do here, we're just literally going to put some numbers in. So now that we've gone through and we measured it out, what we want to look at are a couple of things. Number one, what size meter do we have? And what is our total developed length? So the longest one right here is going to be the 15. So we're going to go from here and add it through. So we've got 15, 20, so we've got 35, 45, 55. We have 60 feet from the meter to the furthest point. Now we know this just by getting up there and measuring it. It's not hard to do. But what we have to do now, we need to look at all the BTUs here and add them up. That way we know what we've got. So we'll take our 130 and 40 is 170 plus 60. You got 230 plus 30. You got 260 minus the three. So you got 257,000 CFH, cubic feet an hour. Let's double check that. 130, 170 plus 30 is 260 minus three, 257. I know, I do math a little bit different. So anyway, 257 cubic feet an hour is what we're dealing with. So on this system, say I go through and measure it. So that's what it would look like. I've got half inch, I've got half inch here, three quarter inch to there, three quarter inch going off here to my range, one inch coming down to feed that, one inch going off to my furnace, and then inch and a quarter feeding the whole thing. So we've got 257 BTUs and 60 feet of overall total developed length. You go down to 60 feet, you go across to the 257, and what I see is this could have been one inch here according to this chart. Now, this remember I told you this was built on a conservative pressure loss, so maybe said, you know what, when this furnace kicks on at 130 cubic feet an hour, it could draw a lot. Let's go ahead and boost this up just a little bit. Sometimes people do that. So anyway, this is what we drew out. Now what we're trying to figure out is what if we took this to 199,000 BTUs? And for simple math, we're gonna call it 200 BTUs. So we're actually adding 160,000 BTUs. So we're adding 160 CFH. So we're gonna add 160 to this and we're gonna... Okay, I drew my two backwards. <laughs> and that's gonna give us 318 cubic feet an hour. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm still got the same 60 feet. So I'm gonna go down to the 60 feet developed and it's gonna take me over to the inch and a quarter and it's gonna tell me I can handle up to 528 cubic feet an hour. 
well under or well over our 318, so that's good. But now what I've got to look at is I've got to get that 200,000 BTUs all the way to the very back. So what I want to look at, I want to go to the 60 feet and understand I've got to have at least one inch going to this according to this chart. So what that tells me is I need to increase that line to one inch. So if I build this backwards now, knowing that I need that to get my 200 BTUs there, this line needs to go to one inch. This one is already at one inch, so I'm okay. So literally, all I have to do is disconnect right here, increase this to one inch, disconnect here, increase that to one inch. Now I can handle a tankless water heater. Now, this is not very hard to do. You literally gotta go through the house, measure what's there, look at what you're trying to add, and then change that. Now, the only other thing that might have made a difference here in Texas is instead of the meter here at the house, the meter may have been way out here down by the street. So if so, what we need to look at is how many feet do we have here? What if this added 100 feet? And I'm just gonna do that just to, just to see what the difference would be. You go from 60 down to 160, now you round up to 175, you go to your 318, well that goes across, now this line needs to be an inch and a half. So things completely changed. So now this line needs to be inch and a half, so you're gonna bring inch and a half all the way into the house, at least up to this first fitting. Now, everything will be okay after that, but now everything gets upsized. So. When you do a tankless water heater, are you looking at everything? Or if you go into a house to do a gas load calculation chart, are you figuring everything? You can look at the plate on each and every fixture to see what's there. Some that aren't, you may have to do an average. But you wanna make sure you understand gas very well anytime you're sizing it or anytime you're adding any fixture. I hope you got something out of this. Learn where your charts are, learn what you need to go by, know what your minimum pressures are and what your pressure drop is. This is a gas load calculation chart. I hope it helps you out. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, helping you make more money in the trades.